that I noticed with my programming with my kids is that it's a lot of screen time. And especially right now with COVID going on, I know they're staring at their screens doing schoolwork, or they're supposed to be staring at their screens doing schoolwork, and I want to get them outside a little bit. So um, back when we were in class in grade four, we did a lot of programming games outside, and I want to share a couple of those. So the first one is very simply squares of chalk. So you just go out to the schoolyard, you have a few teams of kids, and then they can set up their squares of chalk as they wish. So you'll need sidewalk chalk. And then you can either make dice, or I have the kids make cards on cue cards. And for this time around, we're just going to use straight, right, and then left, which is somewhere in here. Here we go. Um, you split the team or your kids into two teams, usually groups of three work really well, but today I'm just going to have my daughter and I play against each other, so it's a little bit harder to set out our code, uh, but that's what we'll do. A few extra supplies you might want, sponge or water gun, if you notice on the actual chalkboard play mat, there are a few blue squares. Those blue squares, if you land on them, then the people who are playing on the outside of the team or running the code, they get to water gun or throw a wet sponge at the person that they're at the opposite team. That's one way to do it. Um, a lot of kindergarten classes and 100 voices classes have these hollow blocks. Uh, the kindergarten teachers usually don't mind if you're nice to them, if you steal them for a couple of these events, and they can be obstacles. Classroom. Normally I have teams of three. One person is our robot. So Freya, you're our robot today. Can you raise your hand? That's our robot. And then the other two teammates would be back here and they would be the ones planning the code. So they would get to have three of their cards and they could decide to play any three of these cards and then they write it down as their code. So I'm trying to get Freya from the start button all the way to the end and right now, I don't even have a straight, so I can choose to pick up and discard, okay? Or I can, for right now, just move her right or left or right, which wouldn't be a good option. So I'm going to choose to pick up, but I have to discard one, and it says straight, and that's what I want to do. I want to get her onto the play board, onto the start. So I'll put my straight code down, and she's going to move one straight. Now, I could, if it's my turn again, I could have her turn. You want to make it clear to the kids that the rights and the lefts aren't moves forward, they're simply rights and lefts. So Freya, I'm going to have you turn right. So the way we showed you before when we were playing in teams was that one person would, you know, either pick a card or discard and find one. Oh, one moment Freya. And then they would get to go. This time, since it's just Freya and me, so one versus one, what you do is you pick your card, and then you decide if you are going to play it, or if it's going to go into the other person's code. So Freya, do you want to go first? Yeah. Okay, so what card do you have? White. Okay, so do you want to turn right, or do you want to have me turn right? I want you to turn right. Okay, so then I have to make that part of my code, and I have to do that. Okay, my turn says straight. I actually don't mind going straight because that will get me up to the code eventually, I think. So I'm going to put that as part of my code and I'm going to go. Freya? My turn. And what? You going to leave that as part of your code? Yeah. Okay. And mine's right as well. I don't want to turn right. That'll make me go backwards. So I'm going to do that to my daughter. I'm going to Make her go a little farther away from the end point. Turn right, Freya. Okay, and what code did you get now? Yep. Okay, put it as part of your code programming. There. I've got left this time, and I'm okay with that. I'm going to put it as part of my logarithm. There. Freya, your turn. Left. And are you going to turn left? Okay, my turn. Straight. Excellent. I'm moving towards the end. You want to go one more time, Freya? Straight. Good job. So you have them keep their code, and then that way at the very end, 
you can have them go back and complete that code in one full swoop, I suppose you could say, so that they have the log or they can see the logarithm work in one process. So I'd be right, right, straight, left, straight, and then whatever it is all the way to the end for the winner. So one of the games I like to play with uh, my students in grade four is simply hopscotch. It's easy, they like drawing the hopscotches and then they like to play on each other's hopscotch. Um, for the younger crowd, like my daughter who's four, they code it while they go. So they create the logarithm as they're going through it because it's too hard to do that executive functioning like the planning beforehand. So Freya, do you want to throw onto one of those? Okay, so she made it to wave. So now how are, what are you going to do first, Freya? Straight. Mm -hmm. Straight. And what do you do on that one? Wave. Good. And then where are you going to go? Straight. Straight. And what did you get there? What did you land on? Wave. Good. So if you have different actions throughout, like Freya missed her jump when she landed on it, and um, sometimes we do lefts and rights, or we just do turns when I play with the younger crowd. With the older kids, they have to throw their rock. So Freya, can you throw your rock onto here? Any more on? I have to do it over. Okay, try it again. Okay. So they would have to stand at the start and they'd have to st say from here what their code's going to be. Or if I was being really strict that day, they'd have to write it down first and then they would go. So they'd have to be like straight, straight, wave, turn right, straight, jump, then you can get your rock. So that's how they would do it. It's the same process of coding as on the computer, except for the fact that they're outside, they're engaging with their peers and it's easily translated back to the computer when they're doing their programming because they're thinking in each step and knowing that they're gonna to have to debug each step if it doesn't quite work. 